Support for Radio Friends comes from LaBrunere Financial, where they work to ensure a lifetime of financial security for people from all walks of life, from investment services to retirement plans. If you're looking for a trustworthy company that has the experience and knowledge to put your interests first, contact LaBrunere Financial, a community-based investment counseling firm since 1966. Good morning, and welcome to Radio Friends on Monday, October the 17th. Nanette Chung-Ming Ward is with us, and you know Nanette uh, representing Stop Human Trafficking Coalition of Central Missouri. Uh, this is a, um, a topic that we discuss from time to time. I think most people are really not aware of how big a problem human trafficking yeah. is. It's especially right here in central Missouri. Yeah. You don't think of it occurring here in Columbia or central Missouri. But yes. one reason it is, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the interstate. Is that right? Interstate That's, 70? That is definitely plays a part in it. Um, but just our you know, people struggling to find a job or just abuse in the home, um, that's happening right in the neighborhoods. You can not even have the highways around and it will still happen. But certainly the highways contribute to the trafficking being in this area. Now, how does abuse in the home so you can have contribute to human trafficking? So you can have domestic violence, intimate partner violence, and child sexual abuse. And when there's some um, form of commercial exchange, like if the husband traffics his wife and gets money for um, her engaging in sexual activities. So it can be a husband who's the trafficker, or it can be a boyfriend and girlfriend living together. It can be the boyfriend trafficking. So it, How, when, so, you know, that, the, so there's uh, domestic violence or sexual abuse, but when there is some exchange of something of value in that. So it's the same with child sexual abuse. We're all familiar with child sexual abuse happening in the home by a family member, perhaps, or a parent, perhaps. And But when there is some something of value exchanged in that um, interaction, then it's human trafficking. How often does it occur that a husband is trafficking his wife or a boyfriend S is trafficking his girlfriend? And parents trafficking their children. It's much more often than we would like to Here? think about. Everywhere, Paul. This is like, as you said in your beginning, like people don't realize it is, is here. So how so, do you, how can you detect this? So it's very difficult because, as we know, in domestic violence, the wife is afraid to speak out, that doesn't want to talk about their spouse in any way. So they're threatened, they're, um, they're living in fear. And that's the same when they're a victim of human trafficking. Again, it might be the victim doesn't even realize it's human trafficking. They just know there's this, this bad treatment and exploitation by an intimate partner, their husband, their boyfriend. So they don't know that if there could be exchange of drugs or exchange of money, something of value, you know, or not having to pay rent because I'm going to have my wife or intimate partner do this. And they, they might even realize what kind of exchange of value is happening because because of what they're being asked to do. Okay, so to how do. can you or I or anybody listening, so, how can they detect that something isn't quite right so with if, a neighbor or a friend? So just when something doesn't feel right, it, it probably isn't. So if, if you seem to, to feel like there's um, an overprotection, like not letting the spouse who's a victim like speak for themselves or, or not be able to do anything without permission, um, that kind of thing. Or maybe, you know, we talk about sometimes bruises that we should be alerted to and we might think, okay, maybe domestic violence. It could be domestic violence that's in the form of sex trafficking by the partner. So all those usual indicators for Domestic violence, intimate partner violence, could also include the, the form of trafficking. It, and same in children. You know, okay. things that we look for in signs of child sexual abuse um, can be indication of, of the form of trafficking happening to that child. Can people go to your website? Uh, is, is all of this information on the website? So I, I want to promote that we are doing a Human Trafficking 101 training on November 15th from okay. 530 to 830. It's free. And you can 
call 866-590-5959 or send an email to help at stophumantraffickingmo.com to sign up for this free um, presentation that will help you learn about human trafficking, whether you're a parent, a teacher, a pastor, a concerned citizen, a grandparent, a, a coach, daycare provider, youth worker, social service provider, doctor, if anybody. anybody. So where, where yes. is the... Where is so the, it'll uh, be at 500 East Walnut, uh, Suite 103. It's the Ready downtown, right across from the post office. So there's there's tra- there's not traffic. There's, there's parking, easy parking around that okay. area because we're actually... A garage is right above that. Okay. In, in that so building. it will be November the... 15th. 15th. What, what it's night? It's a Tuesday it? night. Tuesday from night from 5 30 to 8 30. So if you want to sign up for mm-hmm. this, the number is 866. If you want to grab a pen, I'll wait for you a minute here. Mm. Somebody, they're running to grab yes. a pen to write this yes. down. Okay, you ready? 866 590 5959. You can sign up for this. Uh, it's free of charge. You will learn something and perhaps open your eyes yes. to what is going on. And the intersections are not just with domestic violence, and this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we work with many domestic violence shelters around the state when they have individuals who are clients that come in and in telling their story, um, those who are aware in these domestic violence shelters of human trafficking, they reach out to us to give additional support to these individuals because there's an added layer of their the violence that's happened to them that includes something of a commercial exchange that makes it human trafficking and not just simply domestic violence, but also child sexual abuse to understand that within child sexual abuse, it can be trafficking. And there's some important legislation I want to mention quickly that went into effect August 28th. We were, you've probably heard me say here before that we could arrest our children for prostitution. That has changed. Now we are acknowledging that these children who are in in forced prostitution or being raped for for pay by a buyer to somebody who's controlling them, that they're actually a victim of human trafficking, a victim of sex trafficking. And that's a form of child sexual abuse. So now they're treated as a victim. They're not arrested as a prostitute. And there are things in place to get them help. Um, also, a statewide council being put in place for us to look more closely um, at our children and their safety and, and, and also not having them caught up, um, lost in the, the legal system, criminal justice system as, as a victim instead, okay. getting the help they need. Nanette, thank you so much for coming by. I know this is very, very important. And again, if you want to sign up for that class or, or he, seminar. Human trafficking training. Okay. Yeah. 866 590 And it's free. And it's absolutely no free. Okay. Thank you, Nanette. Appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Come back again. We're out of time for today. If there's something you would like to hear or see on our program, drop me an email. PepperPMissouri.edu.